Don Sterner and a handful of other keepers are spending a lot of time in a tiny little trailer in a remote corner of the safari park. Nearly every part of the condor breeding pens can be monitored from here, and all the paired birds are watched closely. We have cameras in their nest boxes uh, to be sure pairs are compatible, that they work well together. We sometimes will put um, artificial eggs in with a pair just to find out that they are working well together before we actually risk their real eggs. Biologists consider each egg a precious commodity. 30 years of recovery and captive breeding have led to some remarkable achievements, but the species is not yet self-sustaining. Even though there are a little over 400 birds now, 400 California condors in the world, that's still not very many condors. But that's a lot more than there were in the 1980s. The population of condors fell to 22 birds before biologists launched a controversial effort to capture all remaining wild condors. Keepers have exploited the birds' parenting instincts to encourage them to lay two eggs each spring instead of just one. And Sterner says keepers use realistic puppets to help raise the chick from the first egg. It looks like a condor head, and that's what they get used to as providing for their food and so forth. There's, there's obviously, obviously our shortcomings. I mean, the pu puppets don't have body language like a real condor does, but it's as close as we can get. The puppeteers hide behind a screen so the birds don't imprint on humans. That's important because every bird born in captivity could end up in the wild. To see the start of a, uh, a little egg that I've been able to watch develop over a period of eight weeks, and then it's this little chick and it grows up into this big bird that weighs over 20 pounds with a nine-foot wingspan, and then you see it flying out in the wild is just an absolutely awesome experience. It's amazing. Michael Mace is the curator of birds at the San Diego Safari Park. He says half the condors alive today are flying free in their historical ranges. There are condor release programs in Central California, Arizona, and Mexico. I think the fact that we've gone from 22 birds now to more than 400, with more than half of those in the wild, those producing their own offspring, we have, we have made great strides. But the bird's flight to recovery has not always been as easy as riding a thermal in the backcountry. Condors faced a threat from mosquitoes, forcing biologists to develop a West Nile virus vaccine under a tight deadline. And the ancient birds have had to deal with ongoing threats created by people. Condors are scavengers, and so they come down sometimes and feed on carcasses that have been taken in as game. And when they do that, they accidentally ingest lead during their feeding activities. Efforts to outlaw lead bullets have largely failed, but they are ongoing. And trash created by humans is another threat that May says has to be dealt with if the condors are to survive. The playing field in a program like this is constantly changing. What we have to do is either react to the new circumstance or try to anticipate what some of those challenges might be. May says biologists have done fairly well in managing the complicated $2 million a year recovery effort. He says, however, diligence is required. The chicks that we raise today if, if, they, if they make it through their life span, will be with us more than 60 years. So it's critical that we, we reduce or eliminate these obstacles that are in the way of recovering a species like condors. And the recovery effort is important, not just for condors. May says the birds are considered an umbrella species. Their range in the wild is immense. And making that range safe for condors makes it safe for lots of other species too. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.